another story time. I told you guys in my last story time video that I was going to film this one because it is a lot scarier than the last one that happened to me while I was in California. Now this one was actually on the way to California and you guys this one was like something that I probably could have lost my life. Like I would have ended up on the news. It would have been like headline simply NASA 15's body found in ditch. I'm going to be sharing sharing with you guys this story. And I just texted my friend and I was like, okay, I'm about to tell the story of how he almost died. And she was like, so I hope you guys enjoy this story. This one's definitely a lot more dangerous and a lot more scarier. And a lot of you are going to be like, girl, stop, stay home. Because every, I swear, like, some people probably think I'm making all this stuff up. People are probably starting to think like, this girl has like the worst luck in the world. And yes, I do have the worst luck in the world. Like, everything wrong always happens to me. And I love how it's been like, the past two years of my life that I've had the worst karma, the worst um, luck in the world. Like, I feel like I'm a pretty good person, I think. I don't understand why all these things happen to me, but like I said in the last one, I always end up okay somehow, so, hey. So this story takes place when we were on the road, me and my friend Claudia, on the road to California on Friday night? No, we left Saturday morning. So this happened around like four or five in the morning. So when you're on your way to California, or I think you're already in California, yeah, because it's the California State Prison, duh. But when you're driving, there's like a bunch of dirt and like there's nothing around, it's nothing but dirt, and it is the California State Prison sign, so it's like, don't pick up any hitchhikers, call the cops if you see anybody walking around here, yada yada yada. So it is, you know, common sense, don't pull over around there. There is a piece of hair on me, oh my gosh. Common sense not to pull over and not to pick anybody up because they could be an escaped felon or, you know, someone that escaped. So I, you know, was not trying to stop anytime soon and not trying to get in any trouble. Now, we pass the prison, all is good, and while you're like on the road by the prison, like your internet service and like your phone service goes to like garbage. So we're over here like in silence the whole time because we're not going to listen to the radio because everything on the radio sucks. Nobody wants to hear Bad Blood by Taylor Swift 50,000 times on a road trip or You Earned It by The Weeknd 50,000 times because that's the only two songs they're playing. So we turn the radio off and we've been listening to like Pandora and Spotify and those shut off because I guess when you're driving past the prison they probably have some kind of thing going on that they're monitoring who can get internet access and all that stuff, you know, just in case these prisoners are super smart and they create computers from rocks. So we're over here, you know, the, the song starts playing again and we're like, hey. And then I hear a boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, oh, not again. Okay. Because about a month ago, somebody hit my bumper in my school parking lot and they took off. So I didn't know who hit it. And I took it to go get an estimate. And the people at the estimate place, the collision center, were like, no, it's fine. We'll just pop it back in. And I was like, cool. Awesome. Don't have to pay any money. But recently the car's like bumper has been dropping and I have to keep popping it back in and it drops so I'm like okay now I actually have to pull over I don't want to pull over there's so much hair over me. I don't want to pull over because I mean we just passed the prison so it's like not safe to just pull over right away but I'm like okay I can't just keep driving with my bumper on the floor because I'm going to mess up my car even more like I was already with the plan in my head like when I get back from California I'm gonna get this bumper replaced which my bumper is getting replaced Monday so I pull over to pop the bumper back in and while we were pulled over, I had my little emergency flicker lights so nobody knows, or so people know not to like, you know, hit me or something, because it was not like super bright outside. It was still, you know, four or five in the morning, so it was still a little bit, you know, darkish. And I'm outside, and it takes me probably about a minute to pop everything back in, and just to make sure everything is secure. And while we were doing that, a car passes us, but they're slowing down, and we are on the highway or whatever that long strip road is. So everyone's going really fast and no one's stopping. This car passes us slowly and they pull over in front of us. And it's a man's voice and he says, you ladies need some help. And I'm like, no, thank you. We're fine. We're fine. I just had to look at my bumper really fast. We're taking off. And I kind of said this while I was walking back to my car door really fast. Like I didn't want to seem like I was scared or anything, but I was kind of walking, you know, back to my car because I've always heard all these serial killer stories, how serial killers pull over to help you, then they freaking murder you. I was kind of just trying to walk back to my car like no we're fine just had to check my bumper we're cool and I'm about to get in the car so I get inside my car and I'm looking at her like we're gonna die and I left the car running because why would I turn the car off and then turn it back on like that's a whole process of 
possible death. So I get back in the car, put my seatbelt on, and this guy is coming towards us, and he has like a sweatshirt on, and you guys already know, we are in summer. I just got out of Arizona entering California. That don't mean it's gonna go from 110 Arizona weather to suddenly like 60 degrees beach weather. It's still hot. So why is this man wearing this hot ass sweatshirt and pants right now with the hood on? Hell no. So I'm over here looking at him like no, no, no. And what creeped me out the most was that his hand was inside his sweatshirt. Like, here's an example. like. This was like his sweatshirt sleeve, so you couldn't see what was in there, so I'm like, all these things running through my mind, like he could have a knife in there, he could have a gun, like, what is going on? Why is he coming towards my car? I said I'm fine. He should have left like a normal human being. So here I am, you know, still panicking. The car's already on, so I'm taking off and I'm kind of pulling over, but how do I pull over with the dude in front of my car? Am I supposed to hit him? Most of you are thinking, yes run his ass over. But it's not that easy. I just passed the prison. I ain't trying to get arrested or put in that prison for running someone over. So I'm over here like beep beep like can you move out the way? Get the girl. So I kind of go around him and he runs back to his car and I'm like no 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 dash like I don't dash but my car does and I never driven so fast in my life I think my car only goes up to like 160 or 140 160 but your girl was going 120 everyone else is like you know mm, we're going about 60 miles and my car is like mm, that's good. I was so scared like why was a guy coming up to my car even though I said I was fine what happened to my hair just by doing that movement like my hair just like got stuck and that's how you know you have really damaged hair when it gets stuck. So we're kind of going and going and going, and the guy's behind me the whole time. Like, he wasn't going like 120 like I was. I'm pretty sure he was probably going like 80 or 90, but his car was still behind mine. Like, it was like kind of following us, and I was like, no, 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 no. And I think we kept driving, and he kept following us until we passed Palm Springs, I think that's what it was called, because there was like a sign on like the overpassing that said like something springs, desert springs? I think it was Palm Springs. Right before you hit the windmills, that area. I kept like switching lanes between the two, kind of swerving between cars and trying to go in front of like semi trucks so this guy can, you know, kind of get out. And eventually I had to get gas because I don't know, I don't like the idea of having under half a tank of gas, especially on like a road trip, because it's just like, you never know what's going to happen. You might need to have almost nearly full gas. So I wanted to pull over to a little gas station and there was like a Chevron somewhere around these outlets, um, right before you hit these outlets that have like freaking St. Laurent and all this stuff. And I'm like, wow, and all we have is a coach outlet. Over here in California, they got all this Gucci and stuff for half price. So I go to this gas station and I go to get gas and I didn't see the guy's car. He's gone. He's gone. Cool. I'm living. When I get out of the car to put gas, I was only going to put like 10 bucks in because my car is really good on gas, so it doesn't take a lot of money to fill it up. So I pull over and I start putting gas in my car and... I feel it. Here comes the guy. And this was when I was kind of putting the little cap back on my car again and closing the thing. It only takes one click, so it's not like I gotta roll the whole thing. I just went... I closed it and I'm getting back in my car and I'm like, here he comes again. No. I get in the car, I turn the ignition on and I didn't know how to get out of the parking lot, which was kind of embarrassing because I was just like kind of going in little circles and stuff, but I saw his car coming. Like I knew it was his car. It was a blue range, or it wasn't a car, it was a truck. It was like a range, a Ford range. I keep saying car, it's a truck. Ford Ranger, I think that's what it's called, it was like a blue one or something. And it's like, it's not like a common color, so you're not going to see a thousand of them. It was this guy. So I eventually find my way out of there and I take like this road to get back on the, whatever, the 10, I think that's what we were on. I think we were on the 10. He's again following me. You guys, why am I always being followed? Why? Can someone answer that? Why? And there was a bunch of semi trucks, so I was kind of boxed in, which really irritated me because... I don't like being boxed in, like I don't even like driving next to semi trucks because I have this fear that they're just going to go <laughs> So I was trying my best to try to get away from this truck and we probably went about 30 or 40 miles and the guy um, kind of vanished again. But wait, is the story over there Vanessa? No, it can't be over. This is fucking Simply Nessa 15. Something else worse has to happen, right? I can't remember the town. I know we were going towards Riverside. But I don't really remember what the town was called. 
uh, or Indio? Is that what it was called? I don't know, something with an eye. I don't know. I got really hungry and I saw that they had a Wendy's and it was the first Wendy's I saw in a while. So I wanted to go and get some french fries. So I go inside the Wendy's thing and I'm like, hey, can I get two large fries? And they're like, can you please pull over into the parking lot? We haven't made any fries. And I was like, I go into their parking lot. I'm parked there. And who makes their appearance? My creepy stalker from the road. And he parks right next to me and he puts his window down and he's like, I've been trying to um, get your attention. I left my fries. I left and I didn't see him again. He didn't follow us. Why do I have the worst luck? Why are people always following me? I'm not all that. I need some bombshell cutie model status. Why are people always trying to kill me? But that's what happened. I told you guys in the last video, like, this one was a lot more scarier because it's like, I was, like, I'm fresh to road trips. Like, this was my first time, you know, just trying to go and do something as a grown independent woman and I almost died. So it was pretty scary. It was pretty, pretty intense. But yeah, I'm fine once again. I always say this at the end of all my stories, but I'm okay. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys enjoyed this story time. Um, I don't know how long this video has been going on for because I turned the little display thing off, so I don't know how long this video is. But hopefully it was under 20 minutes so I could edit it down to like 11 or 12 minutes. But like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed. I know you guys like my story times the most on my channel. I have noticed and a lot of you guys were like, just post the video, just post the other story. We want to know what happened. So I figured, let me just post it right away and let me film it right away so you guys can know my story. So yeah, um, nothing else has really happened to me um, other than this story. Like, I had a pretty good California experience except for that creepy Hollywood Boulevard guy. And a lot of you have been telling me, like, expose him, expose him, tell us who he is. All I'm going to say is this. When you are in California and you want to go to Hollywood Boulevard, do not take a picture with a man with a cape and a sword. That's all I'm going to say. Remember that children and young women and young men watching this, do not take a picture with a man, a man with a cape, a sword, and he also had a mask. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for 103,000 subscribers. I love you guys so much. I was checking my status on my videos um, on this website called like VidStats or something or Social Blade. I was checking both of them. I can't remember which one told me this, but they tell you like the prediction for your channel. And this thing predicted that my channel will get to half a million by January. That's kind of crazy. Like I don't think it's going to happen that fast because I just hit 100,000 yesterday. I think so I don't know but I think that would be pretty cool a hey, half a million by 2015 check me out subscribe become a member of the Franco family I don't know what dance I'm doing but if you like it subscribe bye you would look bold yeah.